right, everyone. Um, this is the last um, video series that is going to tackle the reciprocals of sine and cosine, which are going to be cosecant and secant. And um, I'm going to give an example of each and then uh, head on over to the practice. And one thing that we got to remember is that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, okay, and vice versa. And so, oops, so that means is that um, what we're going to do, the technique that I'm going to show you is that we're going to graph the sine graph first, and then we're going to make um, some connections between that and the cosecant graph, and then we're going to go ahead and pick this thing apart uh, so we can uh, have a better idea what this is going to look like. So anyhow, let's get the sine graph on first. Okay, so there is sine, just kind of like, uh, kind of like a ghost of it, if you will. Now, we're after cosecant, which is reciprocal. So what we're going to do is that we got to think about each one of these x-intercepts here. Okay, are of course is going to be where x equals zero. However, when we take the reciprocal of zero, that's going to be undefined. So for cosecant, every one of these x-intercepts are going to turn into asymptotes, okay? Just like these guys right here, okay? And for cosecant, um, since we're taking the reciprocal, that's going to flip the values, and so therefore it's going to flip the actual sine part or the, um, the valleys and peaks like this here and it is going to go right towards the asymptotes, of course. So it's going to look like um, some horseshoes, if you will. Okay, or some people call them teeth. Okay, I don't know anybody who has teeth like this, though. So, but um, and then that is going to be the graph of cosecant in just its parent position. Okay, so I'm going to erase everything that we don't need, which is the old part of the sine graph. And there we have it. Um, and so let's go ahead and take a look at what we got uh, going on here, okay? So the amplitude, the amplitude, it's not really a amplitude here, but it was the single like distance between the, uh, the peaks and valleys here of the graph before we flipped it and the absolute value of that. So that's just gonna be one. The period, is going to be the exact same as a sine graph right here, okay? If we look at this box, it starts to repeat itself after that. So that is really kind of like one good uh, periodic uh, example of the cosecant graph here. So that's going to be two pi, the same as its reciprocal sine. Phase shift, we're not shifting anything right now, it, but it works the exact same thing as sine, so keep that in mind. And same thing with the vertical shift. X-intercepts, hey, there aren't any, okay? So that means is that it doesn't hit at all um, in its parent form. Y-intercepts, and there's an asymptote right here on the y-axis, and so therefore there is none there as well. So now what we need to do is that we need to formulate the domain. And the domain is going to be all real numbers, except and x equals and so we have this distance of pi in between the asymptotes here so and since the first intercept or i should say the first break in the domains at zero we just use pi n where n is an integer Okay, and so that means is that every increment of pi from zero, okay, so this would be like one pi, two pi, again, three pi, whatever n is, um, we can go ahead and say that there's going to be a break, and this would be like a negative pi going back, negative one pi, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the range, interestingly enough, is going to be uh, the uh, basically the opposite, uh, or everything that sine is not. So it's going to go from a negative infinity, 
okay, which is starting way down here at the negative infinity part. And it goes up to a negative one, okay, at these guys right here. And it includes that negative one. Then we have kind of like this break right in the middle here. So we have to union that and then start back up at one and then go to infinity. All right. So that is cosecant and its parent form. And so uh, let's take a look at uh, graphing it and uh, shifting it around and doing all that good stuff. So see you in the next video. All right. So here we go. Applying what we have. Um, just based on um, the last video about cosecant and all the information that we know about sine. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start picking this thing apart. And it works the exact same way as sine. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually graph a kind of a ghost of sine first. And then I'm going to flip it later to make it cosecant. Okay. So here we go. Um, amplitude is going to be the absolute value of that guy. So that's just going to give me 2. And the period, I have 1 in front of here. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 1, which is just going to give me the 2 pi. Okay. And so um, if I am looking to just put a sine graph on here real quick, like this. All right, so again, the amplitude is 2 going this way and 2 going this way, and so that's what we're up against. And so again, this is kind of like the, the ghost of that particular graph, okay? Now, we do have to do the phase shift, and the phase shift works out the same way for sine, or cosecant rather, the same way for cosecant as it does for sine. So we know that we are going in the opposite direction, which is going to be right. So I go right, and I have pi over 3 divided by 1, which basically means is that I'm moving everything pi over 3 um, to the right. And so uh, pi over 3 to the right. Ugh, I don't know why I wrote it like that. But look at this magic. I can put it back up there. Okay, And so... Um, that means is that every one of these guys is going pi over 3 to the right, which is about two spaces there. Okay. And that goes over there. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to finish this up, uh, completing using some patterns and, uh, and erase out the original uh, graph so we can get down to business here. Okay, so that's what we got all worked out right now. Okay, and last thing we should do is mention that there's no vertical shift. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything up top here. And now we just have to do as we did in the introductory uh, video to um, Cosecant, is that we turn all the x-intercepts now into asymptotes. Okay, and we are going to flip all of the graphs on over, making them kind of the horseshoe-like, uh, the best that we can here. Okay, and let's see this guy going. Oops, and this one's uh probably. I don't know if I did that one. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so there we are, and so um. I'm going to now erase out the skeleton part of the sine graph that we use to do the cosecant graph. And there we go. Okay. So um, let's just walk through everything uh, to make sure that we have everything under control here and be able to pick up on all the missing pieces, or all the pieces rather. So there's no um, x intercepts because there's nothing going on, it doesn't touch the x axis. Okay. The y-intercept, uh, so we're going to plug in 0. So we got f of 0 equals 2 cosecant of 0 minus pi over 3. So I got 2 cosecant of a negative pi over 3. Okay, 
And so, um, just using our knowledge of, and I'm just gonna do the work right here, of what we got going on for this business of the, um, the unit circle, is that we know that a negative pi over three is gonna be right here, okay? And, um, and so, if you look at that from the sine perspective, okay, is that the sine of uh, pi over three is going to be one half, or I'm sorry, uh, root three over two. So let's put all these pieces together like we practiced, okay? Is that I would have two cosecant, oh, I don't need to write that, is that this negative pi over three is going to give me um, root three over two for sine, and then I flip it on over, do the reciprocal and all that other good stuff, and that is going to give me two root three over three, right? And so I put that right there, and it's parked in uh, cosineville, and so it's going to be negative, and so I got two root three over three, which is going to give me approximately Okay, uh, last type of uh, trig graph to learn, which is secant. And uh, much like uh, cosecant, we started with the reciprocal, which is going to be, um, was uh, the reciprocal of sine, and secant, the reciprocal of that, is going to be cosine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draft up a skeleton of cosine, and so we can put all the pieces together from there. Okay, so there is cosine, and what we're going to do in the same uh, vein that we did cosecant is that we have every single one of these x-intercepts turn into the asymptotes uh, for all the same reason, is that the recipro reciprocal of zero is uh, undefined, so that's going to turn into an asymptote, and um, then we need to go ahead and flip that on over because we're not shifting it any which way. Oops. And so each one of these are going to be flipping on over like so. And here we go. It's kind of finishing up on these horseshoes here. And yeah, that's the way that um, 
secant's going to look, so let me go ahead and uh, get rid of the old cosine graph so we can get a better look at it. Okay, so there we go. And uh, so we're going to start filling in the, uh, the bottom here so we can get to the, uh, the example. So in its parent form, we know that we are going to have the amplitude of 1 um, because that's what cosine had. Again, before we flipped it on over, had an amplitude of 1 between each, um, you know, uh, peak and valley. And then we have uh, the same thing, which is going to be a period of 2 pi. And you can look at it in a bunch of different ways, but um, here is a period of 2 pi, which basically means is that um, it's going to start repeating itself. Remember that? Okay. Oops, I'm going to get rid of that and then put 2 pi here. All right. There's no phase shift in the standard form, and there's no vertical shift in the standard form. Um, just like its friend the cosecant graph, there are no x-intercepts, okay? And the y-intercept here is going to be at uh, 0, 1, okay? And then what we're going to do, oops, sorry about that, is that we're going to take a look at uh, the domain. And the domain is going to be all real numbers, except, okay, x equals, and we start off with the first positive break in the domain, which is pi over 2, plus the distance in between each intercept, okay, sorry, not each intercept, each asymptote, I misspoke. And so it's going to be pi, so that is pi n, where n is an integer, okay? And then finally, the range is going to be the same, um, exactly the opposite of what cosine would be. And so it's a negative infinity to a negative 1 union with a positive 1 to infinity, okay? So um, that's what that looks like in standard form. So let's go on to a example of that, okay? So our last example here is going to be on the secant graph, and we know that secant is going to be the reciprocal, right, of cosine. And so therefore, what we're going to look at is getting the cosine graph on here and just kind of treating this like cosine and then flipping it around like we've done for the cosecant graph uh, to make it true to its form. Okay? So this is how we're going to do it. Um, we start off with this value out front, and we start with the amplitude first. And it looks like I'm going to get the absolute value of a negative 1, which is 1. So we know that it's going to be flipped around the x-axis here and have the amplitude of 1. And I'm going to clear some of this stuff out here. So that means is that for cosine, it's going to start down here. Okay, so now we need to determine the period so we can see how much it's going to stretch from um, left to right. Okay, so to do so, we take 2 pi and we're going to divide pi over 4 into that. So after doing that out, we're going to end up with 8. Okay, and so the period is going to be 8, which means is that it is going to return right back to here. So it's going to go through its entire cycle from 0 to 8. And so um, that means the following, okay, is that it is going to, it, since these are both going to be the valleys here, okay, or the bottom part, the minimums, etc., then right here is going to be the maximum right in the middle, and then right in the middle of those are going to be the x-intercepts. And so, so far, this is the ghost or the skeleton, if you will, of the graph. Now, we still have to do the phase shift, which is going to move this thing a little bit. And so, let's figure that guy out. So, we always look at that and go the opposite direction. So, we know we're going left in the negative direction because that's positive. And we go this term, pi over 2. Oops divided by pi over 4, okay, which is going to give me 2, okay? And so it looks like I'm going 2 to the left. And so that means that each one of these is going to be popping on over here, 
and here and etc okay and so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to um, get that graph rewritten and so we can uh, start to knock the thing down from there okay so there we go and that is uh, going to complete everything that we need before we start to uh, add the asymptotes and then flip the everything around uh, there is no vertical shift Okay, I promise you there's going to be vertical shifts in later lessons. Seems like we never use them, but there, it, 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 there's nothing here to move it up and down right now. So, before we answer the other questions, let's flip everything around here and turn those x-intercepts into asymptotes. Okay, like this, and uh, let's make sure that we flip that graph upside down. Doing the best we can here. Okay, and doing this out, and there we go. Okay, so I'm going to erase the blue part of the graph, and there it is. Okay, so we're going to um, do the same thing as we did for the other graphs, is that there's no x-intercepts, and so we're going to put none. Okay. And uh, it also looks like we have uh, an asymptote here on the y-axis, and so there's not going to be any y-intercepts as well. We also know that our first positive break in the domain is going to be zero, and we look at the distance in between these, and that's going to give us four. So it looks like the domain is going to be all real numbers except for n where n is an integer okay and we have the range which is going to be from negative infinity all the way to a negative 2 and including it so it has these guys right here union with 2 to a positive infinity okay so um that's that. I'm going to uh, assign the, uh, the practice graphs for these, and then um, we'll take any questions or concerns or whatever you got uh, from there. So that's how you do that, and I'll see you in the next video.